All right, this is the FAA Part 107 update, your drone operations at night, 107.29. Now, as of April 21st, 2021, certified remote pilots may now fly at night without obtaining a waiver from the FAA, providing the following criteria are met. Now, the remote pilot must have completed an initial knowledge test or training as applicable under statute 107.65 after March 1st, 2021. So if you continue throughout this whole uh, training program, you will have met that criteria. The small unmanned aircraft must have anti-collision lighting visible for at least three statute miles that has a flash rate sufficient to avoid collision. This is taken directly from the FAA circular. The remote pilot in command may reduce the intensity of, but may not extinguish the anti-collision lighting if he or she determines that because of operating conditions, it would be in the interest or safety to do so. No person may operate a small unmanned aircraft during periods of civil twilight unless that drone has anti-collision lighting visible for at least three statute miles and has a flash rate sufficient to avoid collision. Now, after May 17, 2021, no person may operate a drone at night in accordance with a certificate of waiver that was issued to them prior to March 16, 2021. The certificate of waiver that was issued prior to March 16, 2021, that authorizes deviation or flying at night from statute 107.29 terminates on May 17, 2021. Now, we've previously learned that in the continental United States, evening civil twilight is the period of time that's 30 minutes after sunset and morning civil twilight is the period of time 30 minutes prior to sunrise. And in Alaska, the definition of civil twilight is described in the Air Almanac. Now, as we previously learned, we will not be reviewing these questions at the end, but we will just go over it briefly right now. Now, if you're flying in that 30 minute civil twilight, again, your aircraft must be equipped with anti-collision lighting capable of being visible for at least three statute miles. And the small blinking lights that are pre-installed on most drones do not meet that three statute mile requirement. Now, do, new drones may likely, you know, have those lights uh, pre-installed, uh, but for now, we recommend the anti-collision lights made by LoomCube. You can just navigate to loomcube.com and for about 40 or 50 bucks, you can uh, get the light that meets the FAA requirements. And unfortunately, human eyesight is not optimized for night vision. It takes about 30 minutes for our, our eyesight to fully adapt to darkness. The time it takes for us to adjust to this darkness can take longer depending on the amount of light in the environment you may have just been previously exposed to. Now, I'm sure you've all experienced that feeling when you're coming from a brightly lit room and out into the darkness, that sudden impact of bright light, how it can greatly diminish your eyes adaptation. It leaves your night vision compromised and at risk while your eyes begin to adjust again to the darkness and again effectively the process starts all over again. So basically when you're flying at night, situational awareness, plan, simply try to avoid bright lights prior to your not night operations. Now whenever a night flight is planned, the FAA encourages remote pilots and crew members to wear neutral density glasses or N15 equivalent filter lenses if you've been working in bright sunlight during the day. Now wearing those increases the rate of dark adaptation at night and improves night vision sensitivity. Now if you need a light source when preparing your nighttime flight, it's recommended that you use a red filtered light source as a red light does not affect your eyes as much as white light does and a green filtered light will also be just as effective. 
Try to avoid high intensity lighted areas. Fly in a manner where any bright lights may be to your back or behind you. And so overall, if you're flying at night, just try to find a spot that's going to be completely in the dark or as much as possible. Now, certified remote pilots will remember scanning techniques from their initial exam. And scanning at night is a very similar, except you're using a technique called off-center viewing. Now, you scan the sky in 30-degree increments around an object you need to focus on and the duration of each pause should not last longer than two to three seconds. You're moving your eyes in almost a clockwise or counterclockwise direction, moving from one viewing point to the next, overlapping the previous field of view by about 10 degrees. So with off-center viewing, you're not looking directly at an object, but rather you're looking 10 degrees above or 10 degrees below or 10 degrees to either side of the object, in this manner, the remote pilot's spherical vision is maintaining contact with the object. So when using off-center vision, you'll only be able to get that clarity for two to three seconds because your eye's rods, which are one of two types of photoreceptive cells in the retina, they reach the photochemical equilibrium that really prevents any further response until the scene changes. So the rods are responsible for the gray color, if you will, and the spherical vision. What's amazing about these rods is that after approximately 30 minutes of the darkness, these rods become about 100,000 times more sensitive to light than they were in the lighted area. So providing yourself with plenty of time to adapt to the darkness is very important for flight operations. Now, our vision is subject to limitations such as blind spots, illusions, and our eyes are a lot more prone to these limitations at night. We remember from grade school that our eye functions a lot like a camera where you have the aperture, a lens, a mechanism for focusing, and a surface, the retina, for registering the images to your brain. In the retina is where you have two types of light sensitive cells that convert light into the electrical impulses. And these two types of light sensitive cells are the rods and the cones. Now the cones are responsible for color vision and are concentrated highest in the fovea, which is the area in the back of the retina, directly in the center of the field of vision. Now cones and their associated nerves work better in high light levels, but they do not work well in dim light. Now the rods, are unable to discern color but are very sensitive at low light levels and are much better than cones at detecting movement and providing vision in dim light. Now since there's mostly cones in the center of your field of vision this area basically becomes a blind spot so your eyes must now rely more on the rods which are responsible for the eyes spherical vision. So unfortunately, rods are easily overwhelmed by large amounts of light, so they take longer to reset and adapt to the dark again, again up to 30 minutes. Therefore, using off-center viewing is much safer and more beneficial because your central vision isn't as strong. So again, we estimated that once you're fully adapted to darkness, your eye's rods are about 100,000 times more sensitive to light than the cones making them the primary receptors for night vision. Now there's five visual illusions you need to know about. Autokinesis, it's a kind of phantom motion that's caused by staring at a single point of light against a dark background for more than a few seconds. After about eight to 10 seconds, the light appears to move on its own. So to prevent this illusion, Focus the eyes on objects at varying distances and avoid fixating on one source of light for more than 8 to 10 seconds. It's a visual scanning technique. Fascination, fixation, uh, that occurs when pilots ignore orientation cues and fix their attention on an object and becoming fixated on that one object and forgetting about situational awareness. Reversible perceptive illusion. That's an inability to determine if an object is moving toward you 
or away from you. And at night, it's difficult to determine the direction of a manned aircraft, so remote pilots should observe the aircraft lights in their relative position to the horizon. And we'll review that in the next slide. Size distance illusion occurs when a dimly lit object appears to be further away and a brightly lit object appears closer. The size distance illusion results from viewing a source of light that is increasing or decreasing in brightness and the remote pilot may confuse that light as either moving towards them or moving away. And flicker vertigo is a light source flickering at a rate between 4 to 20 cycles per second and that can produce very dangerous reactions such as nausea, vertigo, vomiting, and on rare occasions, convulsions and unconsciousness. So remember, proper nighttime scanning techniques can prevent flicker vertigo. Now, just as mentioned, it's very challenging to determine the direction of a manned aircraft. Which way is it flying? Is it moving towards you or away from you? And fortunately, aircraft are equipped with uh, blinking lights that should quickly allow you to discern the direction the aircraft is traveling. So you have a red blinking light on the left wing or left side of the aircraft or helicopter. And you have a green blinking light on the right wing or right side of the aircraft. And you have a white blinking light on the rear of the aircraft. And on commercial airlines you may or larger aircraft you may see two blinking lights on either side of the horizontal stabilizer or rear wing. And also on larger aircraft, commercial airlines, you'll see a rotating flashing beacon light on the top and bottom of a fuselage as well. Now, physiological conditions which may degrade night vision. We know alcohol consumption is a no-no, no drinking before flying. Cigarette smoking, it can decrease visual sensitivity by increasing levels of carbon monoxide. That results in hypoxia, which directly affects your spherical vision and dark adaptation. Hypoglycemia and nutritional deficiency. So skipping meals can cause low blood sugar, which can impair night flight performance. And an insufficient consumption of vitamin A can also impair night vision. So just be healthy, eat well before you go flying at night. So that's about it. We're going to review some practice questions. And again, we're not going to go over the, the civil twilight. So you see a manned aircraft while flying your drone at night. On the left side, you see a red flashing light. On the right side, you see a green flashing light. Which direction is the aircraft heading? Remember, red is on the left, green is on the right. So the airplane is heading away from you. On average, how much time does it take for your eyes to fully adapt to dark darkness? And that's right, it's 30 minutes. If you need to use a light source during your nighttime operations, pre-flight inspections, whatever it may be, you want to use what type of light source? You want to use a light source with a red filtered light. And again, green filtered light will also suffice. When scanning the sky at night in 30 degree increments, you should never pause for more than how many seconds to avoid night vision limitations? That's right, two to three seconds. Pause for no more than two to three seconds. Off-center viewing is when the remote pilot and or crew members are. Off-center viewing is when the remote pilot and or crew members are this is the 10 degree above 10 degree below either side our eyes don't work well at night when looking directly at an object and that's because what are concentrated in the center of your retina and these only work well in bright light these don't work well in the dim light 
and that would be the cones. The rods work well in dark light after 30 minutes. Rapid flickering of light can cause disorientation, vertigo, and maybe vomiting due to an imbalance of neurological activity that is caused by flashing lights. You can overcome this problem by visual scanning techniques, fixating on one light source. Yep, fixating on one light source. And a light flickering at a rate between 4 and 20 cycles per second can cause what? Vertigo. It can cause unpleasant and dangerous reactions. Nausea, vomiting, vertigo. And lastly, you see a manned airplane flying at night with green flashing light on the left and red on the right. Which direction is the aircraft heading? And that would be it is heading toward you. Red is on the right side of a wing. All right, that's it. You have completed this section on night flying operations. Practice flying at first at low altitudes, open dark fields for the safest experience, and then slowly graduate to higher altitudes. Remember situational awareness and the anti-collision strobe lights. Appreciate y'all and have a good flight.